Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk yeah. about what happened at Redcliffe. I just wanted to thank you. You went out of your way to save the Arles family, and you did it. Even though it would have been easier not to. There's been so much death and destruction. It... Well, it, it makes me feel good that at least we were able to save something. No matter how small. I owe the Arles that much. You're right. Hopefully, by that time, there's still enough of Ferelden left to save. Good. Now that the warm, fuzzy part of the day is over with, we can get back to the ritual dismemberments. Oh, wait. It's not Tuesday, is it? What do you need? Ask away. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. No, I never actually became a full Templar. I was only present during one harrowing. The ritual that they test the mages with. The girl they tested, she had a demon put inside her to see if she could resist. And she couldn't. I have to say I didn't have much interest in becoming a Templar after that. You could call it that, sure. The Chantry doesn't look on it the same way, however, since really our talents only work on mages. Against a regular person, I'm just a guy in a metal suit. Perhaps, but there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars, and since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Ly the Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. I fell, and the darkness drew me in. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. In my dream, I fell. Oh, or maybe I jumped. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the Black devours everything? That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a Blight to stop. Yes? Well, here I am. Quiet. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. <laughs> Rest. Rest would be welcome. Yes, yes, of course. 
I am just a little weary. As you may have noticed, I'm no spring chicken. Ha, huh, very funny. But in all honesty, I do not know how many years I have left in me. I have lived for such a long time, but there is always something else to do. And I have to keep going in order to do it. I think I will be glad when I am done. Oh, I don't know. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Ah, yes, Connor, of course. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. One slip. All it takes is one slip. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. Of late, I have begun to wonder if... if there is any way an abomination can be... cured. Or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity. Their... humanity. Yes, it is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. So, tell me, how did you become a Grey Warden? I have learned a little of the strict caste system of the Dwarves, and I apologize for saying this, but it seems terribly backward. Regardless of what happened in your past, I am glad you found a place with the Wardens, as I'm sure you are too. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. Perhaps it was meant to be. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? I just wanted to know what you thought being a Grey Warden was about. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men. Thus, it is you who serves, not they. A good king, a true king, who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. and the country suffers for it. If you live apart from others, and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence, and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. But I've lectured enough for today. Is there something you need? The Circle is in good hands. Irving knows what to do, and he doesn't need me underfoot. For now, I will support those that battle the Darkspawn. I do feel I left things unfinished in Ostagar. There is so much left to do, and I would be part of it. The Grey Wardens, all two of you, need all the help you can get. And after that, if I am still left standing, then I will return to the Circle. Perhaps.
The Circle of Magi stands ready to assist, Grey Warden, as do the Templars of the Chantry. There are always areas to improve on, Grey Warden. What do you wish of me? If you must. I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no. There were nights when the wilds called to me, it is true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. But my life is as a human. I am under no illusions to the contrary. They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus they cannot speak, even were I to ask. No, tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. I am surprised you think so. Still, it is a pleasant thing to hear. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? No doubt it would. But enough of such talk, let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. I'm Considered my offer? Soldier's Peak has been abandoned too long, if you ask me. A thousand. I'll mark down the location on your map. You're 
dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. <coughs> that may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. No, that's not what magic is used for. Ah, uh, just make him sleep over on the other side of the camp, with Alistair. With any luck, that will keep all the stench confined to one small area. true warrior and worthy of respect. Why are we stopping? There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. No. People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. I am. The Antam are the eyes, hands, and mouth of the Kunari. We are how my people know the world. Compared to what? What does anyone truly know of the world? The world changes. We change. The Antam observe what we can, just as you do. There is no point to this. We are keeping the Darkspawn waiting. What a strange language you speak. You say hurry, where I would say duty. No, it is yours, and you are chatting with me instead. As you wish. Yes. Sitting, as you observed. It's what you asked. I did. Parshera. Was there anything else? Speak, then. Then I suggest we move on. As you wish. Yes. I am hardly surprised. To answer a question. The Arishok asked what is the Blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. Yes. I cannot go home. It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. As you wish. the maker we need help they attack the wagon please help us follow me I'll take you to them
What do you wish of me? wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Of that I have no doubt, you are most skilled. If you haven't killed me, however, you must have kept me alive for some purpose, yes? <laughs> it is my way, or so I am told. Let's see then, I assume you kept me alive to ask me some questions, yes? If so, let me save you time and get right to the point. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Consider it something I'm throwing in for free. As it is, if you're done with the interrogation, I have a proposal for you, if you're of a mind. Very well. Ask, and thou shalt receive. This elf is a crow. That makes sense. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva. I understand they almost run that nation, and are hired only at great expense. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the crows out here. Back where I come from, we're rather infamous. Oh, fine. Is that what you Fereldens do? Mock your prisoners? <laughs> Such cruelty. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. Well, aside from a distinct lack of ambition, I suppose it's because I wasn't given much of a choice. The crows bought me young. I was a bargain, too, or so I'm led to believe. But don't let my sad story influence you. The crows aren't so bad. They keep one well supplied. Wine, women, men, whatever you happen to fancy. 
Though the whole severance package is garbage, let me tell you. If you're considering joining, I'd really think twice about it. You seem like a bright lad. I'm sure you have other options. I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results, if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the Crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> no. no, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? Then, unless you're quite stuck on cutting my throat or something equally gruesome, perhaps you'd care to hear a proposal. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause, so let me serve you instead. I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing, that's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you are the sort who would do the same thing, in which case I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice, and would make me marginally more useful to you. And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I am yours. Is that fair? What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. A fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. As you say. 